Hello, Wilma Hansen School. This is Mr. Weens. Hello. Uh, I am going to be trying to show you how to make your locker shelves. So this is my first time I'm trying to do this. If it works out great, maybe we'll do more. If it works out terribly, you are the only people who are going to see this. You are going to receive two lengths of cut two by four from your teacher. Uh, it'll either be me or this term, it'll also be Mr. McDonald. So come check with Mr. Weens or Mr. McDonald at the table saw and we will have lengths of wood for you. They are going to be eight feet long. They are going to be three quarter inches in diameter. There's one, and here comes two. One of these you are going to turn into four 23 inch sections. Those are going to be the leg braces. The other one you are going to turn into four 12 inch sections. Those are going to be the pieces that go across. So you will end up with something that looks a little bit like this. It'll be 23 inches tall and 12 inches across. So, you guys know how to use a band saw. So you could just go 23. Okay, there's 23 right there. Psh, psh. Turn that point into a line. And let's take this to the band saw. But you're gonna run into a problem. If you cut here, the other side is running into the band saw. So the 23 inch pieces, you're going to need to use a hand saw. The hand saws currently are on the side of this tool cabinet. All right, so we're gonna take this to a workbench. We're going to clamp it on down. And we are going to make sure that we are cutting on that side of the line. We want to leave that line so that we can sand down to it later. It should not take a pile of time to cut through. You don't need to press down hard. You just need to give it some support. We need four of these, so we'll make another line at 23 inches. going to see me cutting by hand a bunch because this project uses some cutting by hand. All right, cutting on the far side of the line again. This time cutting closer to the line. Hey, saw, don't make me look like a fool. There's two. Almost there. third 23 inch piece again on the far side of the line and then lastly a fourth 23 inch piece You're gonna be left with a little annoying piece of scrap that will just be tossed into the garbage. So I'm gonna be cutting on the far side of the line. 
and that part goes in the garbage and I now have a bunch of pieces but I have a bunch of pieces that are just slightly too long so I am going to end up taking these to a power sander this is a tool that I do not believe you guys have used yet there is one here on this side of the shop it works exactly the same as that one way on the other side of the shop that I think you'll be able to see if I pick up my head so this is a belt and disc sander you set the guard by making sure that your piece will fit through but your finger will not so you'll need to lower it down just a little bit there tighten the little screw and my finger no longer goes through so i can uh on this one the emergency stop might be pressed in you pull that out and the stop button might be twisted so the power button no longer works you can twist that it'll pop out Make sure the emergency stop is out, and this is a pretty loud tool, so I'll stop talking, but I'm going to sand down to that line. It should not take very long. While I'm sanding, I'm going to be moving my project, because if I leave it in one spot, the friction is going to get so much that it'll make scorch marks on the wood. <laughs> I now have one piece that is actually 23 inches. I'm going to do the other ones now. So, let's be quick. You should notice that my hand was on the table, this table right here. I'm pressing the piece down. You do not want to have an angle at your piece or you'll end up sanding it not flat. All right, so I should have four boards that are now right on 23 inches. Let's just compare them with one another if I lay them all out. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> what are you stuck on? If I lay them all out, they are, as near as makes no difference, the exact same length. I can even straighten those out a little bit more. Ah, oh, yeah. We'll be more than close enough. Okay, so now I need four 12 inch pieces. And this time. 12 inches is short enough that I can use a bandsaw. So when I'm using the bandsaw, I'm going to try and cut as exactly on the line as I possibly can. But again, I will, if I want to, cheat a little bit to this side because I know that this length is 12 inches. So if I cut over here, I can sand down to that line. If you end, if you end up with more than a centimeter to sand down, don't take it to the sander. Just take it to the table uh, band saw and you can trim it down. All right. So we'll be cutting four of these. Adjusted. Nope. Adjusted well. All right. Nice and close that line. I 
think you should still be able to see this. It's probably just my hands that you can see, but... Okay, one. we need to make and then we are assembling drop the guard all the way down to the bottom when you leave make sure the tool has stopped moving. Okay. I now have four at 23, four at 12, that also all line up. That is close enough to together to work. Okay, so I'm now to the point where I'm going to be assembling my locker pieces into that thing that looked like an A-frame over here, into this looking thing. Okay, so this will require the use of a Brad nail gun. So, Brad guns are kind of like nail guns in that they shoot with compressed air, but they shoot brads instead of nails. Brads and nails are very similar, but not the same. The Brad nail gun is again over on the shelf over here. It is right there. It says nail gun on it. I didn't write that. It is not nails. And it says check the size of Brad of nails again. It's not nails. I didn't write that. Whoever did, use the wrong term. These are Brads. These are Brads. What a Brad is is it still has a point at the front, but the head on the back is much smaller than a nail. They're generally used for finishing things. Uh, you will want to be using the one inch ones. If your brad gun is low on brads, if you arrive and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if that's enough brads, go to the one inch ones, open them up, take a row of them, make sure the pointy end is out there's a pointy end that is a little bit shiny on your side and a wider end. The wide end goes back. You line them right at the front, drop them in. That one's a little bit too long. But yeah, pointy end forward all the way at the front. They will fit behind, but that won't actually work. If you load them up like that, it's not gonna work. So front, Get them in place, line it up, and then you are on to the air compressor. Uh, brads do not hold things together. They hold things still while wood glue dries. So, uh oh, there's my wood glue. 
That was just about a disaster. So, this is wood glue. It should be on the top right shelf of that cabinet over there. But, someone didn't put it away. Okay, you'll be brad nailing on this metal table just in case you accidentally go through things so that they don't get attached to my work surfaces. We're going to lay these out so they're all nice and flat. Oh, these are the sides that I sanded so they are all beautifully flat. You are going to make a decision for how tall you want your bottom shelf to be. My boots that I wear in the winter are pretty short. They only go up my foot about mm, that far, though like seven inches. So I'm gonna put my bottom shelf at 10 inches off the ground. 10 inches off the ground will allow my hand to get down there, but it'll also give me enough space to put something in that shelf. So. 10 inches is where I want my bottom shelf. So I'm going to line these up as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to make as straight a line as this will allow. If I keep this nice and straight flush against the side of my boards and all my base is nice and together, it should make for a nice level locker at the end. So this is going to be my bottom locker support is going to be somewhere around there. I'm gonna put an X where I want to put glue and I want my top shelf to be, uh, how big is my hand? Maybe two textbooks and a hand. So I'll tip up my top shelf just about there-ish. The bottom shelf, I need to fit my boots. The top shelf just gets to be wherever it wants to be. All right, so your squares are all long enough that they make it the whole way across in one go. Mine needs to fit in my pocket, so it's shorter. All right. And the top of that bad boy is gonna be there-ish. So glue, 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 glue. All right, I now am ready to lay out and glue up, as they say. So as long as my pieces are all the same length and all straight, I can line things up there and be confident that this is going to be square two. You can check by just measuring some diagonals and say that is 16 and 5 eighths or so. That is 16 and 5 eighths or so. Hey, nice and square. So I'm going to glue glue, squish down, brad 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 brad, glue glue, squish down, brad 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 brad. It'll look like this, glue, a dollop on there, a dollop on there. As I'm squishing down, it is going to be a little bit wobbly because it's now skating on a little lake of glue. I'm gonna press down while looking for my little pencil lines. If you can see them, I think you can. So. I'm lined up with my pencil lines. I'm pressing nice and hard. Oh, that guy moved. All right. So I have a little bit of a stick with the glue there. And now I need to put in some brads. So you'll find your hose. You're going to pull down that little collar and press in pretty hard to your brad nail gun. If you are struggling with this, just ask a teacher because it is harder than we make it look. Okay, we're gonna put two brads in either side. Uh, this, this little safety mechanism on the top, it is called a shoe. Before you can uh, pull the trigger, that shoe needs to be all the way depressed. So no fingers on the trigger, press it into the wood. I'll hold it in place. Press it into the wood, pull the trigger. Press it in, pull the trigger. 
Press it in, pull the trigger. Press it in, pull the trigger. And now we're just waiting for the glue to dry. So, same thing on the top. One dollop of glue. Two dollops of glue. Alright, we'll line things up. We'll press them home. Always looking at those pencil lines that you made to make sure that everything is still lined up. Okay, I'm pressing down pretty hard, so that's going to be stuck in place pretty well. The glue squeeze out off my hands so I don't get glue on my brad gun. All right, brad gun, here we go. One, two. One, two. There we go. And now I have one leg that is just waiting to dry. In five minutes or so, I'm going to come by with a wet paper towel and wipe those bad boys up. And now you can watch me make the other shelf too. Other shelf support too. I might fast forward through this when I'm editing this together, or maybe I'll let you fast forward. Either way is totally fine. <gasps> okay. Let's... Glue. 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 This is a slightly uglier piece of wood. It has a big old crack on the top, but it should still be totally fine. Alright, glue. Careful little wiggles while you're pressing the glue in. All right, I didn't do as careful a job. She scared me. <laughs> okay didn't do as careful a job lining these up beforehand this time, so I'll do that right now. Alright, and let's brad them home. And if all your cuts were straight and all your measures were true, they should line up really, really well together. loud. So your real next step is wait for a day to let them dry. But we're gonna fast forward through that and go on. Hello, how can I help? Okay, so I said it'll be about, <laughs> in about five minutes we'll do the squeeze out. We'll wipe it off with a wet paper towel. Uh, I was briefly interrupted by a principal. So, tidying up, putting our tools away, getting a wet towel to wipe out the squeeze up. <laughs> wipe off the squeeze out. And then I'll show you the next steps. The next steps is the most careful measuring you will do in a while. Because you are done the 
rails, the supports, the sides of this shelf. You now just need the shelf part of the shelf. Squeeze out, squeeze out. Make sure that none gets on my table. Looks like I was a little bit late to that squeeze out. It's hardened a bit. Same with that one. Okay, well, that one's not gonna look as good as it could, but it'll be okay. Beautiful. Okay, so you now need to take your shelf supports and go to your locker. <sighs> so my locker is just right outside of the shop here. The only thing I use it for is to show what these lockers end up looking like. So there's a locker shelf. You are going to set up your locker shelves, the supports on either side of your locker, and then you need to measure the gap in between so that you can tell me how wide and how long this piece should be. So mine is 10 and a quarter for my last shelves. Is it for this one too? Oh, you know what? If there's a little bit of a gap over here. So I can't say that that's ten and a quarter again. I need to actually measure it. So on the back of every measuring tape there is a little plus blank on there. This one says plus two and three eighths. So if I put the edge of my measuring tape right there, go across to the other side and lock it down, that is a sixteenth shy of eight. So eight plus two, eight, nine, ten, plus three eighths. All right, ten and three eighths. And one, two, three eighths minus one sixteenth. So ten and one, two, three, four, five sixteenths. So I'm gonna, on a piece of paper, write down ten and five sixteenths. 10 and 5 sixteenths and however deep my locker is is the next one so I'm gonna measure from the back wall to right there and that is 13 and one in the 13 and 5 sixteenths 13 and 5 sixteenths eh, both 5 sixteenths interesting 13 at 5 sixteenths. I'm going to go tell those measures to Mr. Weens and give him a piece of paper with them on it because Mr. Weens' memory is terrible and he is going to take a giant sheet and cut it into the exact lengths so that they will fit into my locker like that does, as tight as a drum there is no movement at all except for the flexion in the sides there. You can then paint them as beautifully as you'd like to and you have a set of locker shelves where you can put your books and you can put your safety glasses and you can put whatever you want and you can toss your shoes underneath and you have a set of locker shelves. So I hope that that helped. And if not, what can you do? <laughs> All right, good luck on your project.